This is carbonara, and it's my favorite food in the world. Not only because it tastes just unbelievably good, mm. but also because there are so few ingredients in here, and it takes less than 20 minutes to cook. Now, I cook carbonara pasta for myself probably once a week, but what I've never done is eaten carbonara pasta cooked by a proper Italian chef. The day I discovered carbonara, my life changed forever. So the next day I decided to catch a plane to Rome, the birthplace of carbonara, so I could learn more about this delicious food. After landing, I got myself some focaccia bread and made my way to my accommodation in the center of Rome. This is my home in Rome for the next few days. Oh wow, look at this. Nice bedroom. Ah, shower, bathroom, toilet. And I've got this little kitchen with an electric hob and a sink. But I won't be using it because I am going to feast on proper Italian food cooked by Italian people. Oh, nice view out there. Just had a lovely, lovely shower, ready to go out for dinner tonight. I have booked up a table for one at a restaurant called Luciano. I think that's how you say it. Let's get Google to say it. Luciano Cucina Italiana Roma. We're going to Luciana Cucina Italiana Roma. The reason I'm going to this particular place is because I've heard good things about it. Lots of people have told me I should go there for the best carbonara in the world. There are so many restaurants in Rome to choose from. Um, I, I struggled to narrow it down and, and choose one to go to tonight. But uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go with this. Let's go to Luciano. Please, this way. I came here just to try the carbonara, but with so many interesting dishes on the menu, I decided to try some other food too, starting with an artichoke. Thank you, amazing. Ah, thank you very much. Amazing, yeah, thank you. Just walking back home through the streets, very content with that three course meal. <sighs> I'm full of food. I had this artichoke, which was, I've never eaten like a whole artichoke before, but it was incredibly good. And then it had like this soupy stuff around the outside with some, uh, oh yeah, like a meatball on top. But then the carbonara was just amazing. Interestingly, the, the sauce was a lot thicker than I expected it to be, but the guanciale pieces, the, the, the little pieces of pork, 
There were like little bits of candy within that pasta. Very good. And I've never had any carbonara like that in England. Anyway, it was very nice and I'm glad I did that. It gave me a better idea of how carbonara should be. I'm gonna have a lovely sleep and tomorrow we're gonna eat some more food. See you tomorrow. Good morning from my Rome penthouse. Uh, before we go out and explore the city and eat some more nice Roman food, uh, I wanna quickly talk about today's video sponsor. Uh, there's this app called Cocoon Weaver and it's basically an app which allows you to record voice memos on the go. So if you have a spur of the moment thought or idea, uh, you can record it and save it forever. I wanna make a video about traveling to the city of Rome to eat carbonara pasta. That sounds like a fun thing to do. And there we go. I am never going to forget that video idea that I had. That might be a bad thing. I'm not sure. I have a terrible memory, so this is perfect for me. I might have an idea uh, at night and it might be a brilliant idea, but by the next morning I would have forgotten it. So I can just hit record, speak my idea into the phone, and then the next morning I can look at it back and Realize that it really wasn't a good idea. You can organize your thoughts and ideas into different cocoons. So on mine, I have one which is called food, one for ideas, one for dreams, random thoughts, one for beekeeping, which is very handy when trying to locate an idea that you had about something which was like months ago. So I can go into my food folder and see, ah, yes, that was my celeriac soup. It had one onion, one carrot, one celeriac, and then I added some bread croutons. Everything you record in this app is completely private and only viewable and hearable by you, which is great because if you have really weird ideas like me, you don't need to worry about anybody uh, listening to them. And more importantly, if you have really good ideas, not like me, you don't need to worry about anyone stealing them. Click the links in this video's description to download the app for yourself. Maybe you'll find it useful too. Let's go eat some more food in Rome. My goodness, what a crazy building. After walking around the city all day, I sat down for dinner at a restaurant called Evo that someone recommended to me. I ordered a bottle of water, a cheeseless pizza, and of course, a bowl of carbonara, which was good, but not quite as good as Luciano's. I then walked back home through the beautiful Rome streets, filled up fully with yummy Italian food. Just got back after my day of walking and what else did I do? Eating. I've now got two carbonaras inside me and a whole pizza and an ice cream. We've got one more day left and guess what? We're gonna find more carbonara. Good night. Hazelnut ice cream for lunch. I also got myself this toasted mozzarella sandwich. Mm -hmm. Oh, it just keeps on going. I don't even know what these are. Chocolate, hazelnut, sweets. Oh, this is good. Now one thing I've learned whilst here in Rome is that you shouldn't eat the same food over and over and over again three days in a row because it starts to get boring. You get uh, I think what's called palate fatigue. Your tongue gets bored of the same flavours and carbonara it's a very fatty, creamy pasta dish, which I think is very easy to get bored of. It was amazing on that first day. The second day, still really good, but not quite as special. And then today's meal, I just didn't, I wasn't that excited for it. And I think you can have too much of any, any good thing. So the plan is to have a break. I'm not going to eat carbonara for the next week. 
so I can regain the enthusiasm and excitement I have for this beautiful food. Maybe my taste buds will rejuvenate and, and learn to enjoy carbonara again, because quite frankly, I do not want to eat any more carbonara pasta anytime soon. But then I will try my best to source all the correct ingredients and recreate carbonara myself back home. See you back in England. Well, it's been a few days since I got back from Rome and I'm feeling hungry for pasta again. And uh, the other day, I thought I'd try and source all the ingredients I need to make a proper authentic carbonara that Italians would be proud of. After some research, I realized that it's not quite as simple as just grabbing some bacon and some cream and some cheddar cheese, mixing it up and then calling it carbonara. If you want to call it carbonara, you have to uh, pick and choose the proper ingredients. And first off, I have got a big chunk of what is called guanciale. I bought a whole pork cheek. Once it's cured, its name is guanciale. And this is what you're meant to use in a carbonara. It's kind of a bit like bacon, but in my previous experience of eating this stuff, it tastes way better. So yeah, I went online and I tried to find this stuff. It's actually very hard to get hold of guanciale. I went to the butchers nearby, they didn't have it. But here we have the <laughs> 1.5 kilograms. It's a cured meat, so it's been salted, spiced, and also aged. I think they hang this for 60 days, and this is to uh, remove some of the moisture, one, to make it last longer, but also I think to condense all the flavors down and make it better tasting. So you've got the skin side here, I believe, and then the meat side here. A proper carbonara, the sauce is made from eggs and not cream. Whenever I've had carbonara in England, it always tastes kind of creamy. The carbonara that I had in Rome was definitely eggs and it, and it tasted so much better. And thirdly, the cheese, which is also part of the sauce. This is Pecorino Romano. It is basically a, a very salty, hard cheese and you grate this into the sauce. And another important ingredient is this. Uh, pepper. This is just black pepper in a pepper mill. I bought this pepper mill the other day. It's made by Peugeot, the same company that makes cars. The carbonara that I had in Rome, all of them had quite a lot of black pepper, so we're gonna add lots of that. We've got a pan to cook the pork in. We've got a pot to cook the pasta in. Ah, pasta. Pasta is another interesting ingredient for this dish because uh, in the past I have used spaghetti, which is like these long, thin, pieces of pasta. Uh, but here, I've managed to source some spaghettoni. It's twice the thickness of spaghetti. So you can see how fatty it is. All that fat will be able to melt down in the pan, and that'll also add so much flavor to the sauce. Now, my favorite carbonara in Rome had quite large chunks of the guanciale So I'm gonna try and replicate that. Also gotta try and take off the skin. You can eat it raw. When you put it in your mouth, it feels like it just melts down into liquid, which is a really nice sensation. Right, big chunks of guanciale. I've heard that lots of people like to just use the yolk in the carbonara sauce, they get rid of the, the egg white, but I just feel like I don't wanna waste the egg white, so I'm using the whole thing. Next, we got the cheese. Pecorino Romano, mostly produced in Sardinia and around Rome. Sardinia is the island off Rome, and Rome is Rome. So the egg, I'm then gonna add the cheese. This is a bit of a guessing game, but basically the more cheese you add, the more cheesy and salty the sauce will be, because this is a form of salt. So you can kind of make this however you like. And of course, black pepper. I think the black pepper in a carbonara makes a lot of difference. Time to get some pasta boiling. Got to remember to salt the pasta water. Hi, I'm Alex and welcome to my carbonara rice. <laughs> 
Are you going to make carbonara better than what the Italians have? No, is the answer to that. See the dust that came off of it? Front cream. Mm. I think they say 75 grams of pasta per person. I'm kind of a bit hungrier than a normal person today. So we're going to go for 86 grams. It's not a science, you just take out however much you think that you might eat. You don't need any oil for this pork because there's so much fat there. Pasta takes 16 minutes. And then you don't want to add the eggs too soon because then they will scramble. I normally just wait until it stopped sizzling. I might add a little bit more pasta water to cool it down. And that's already quite a creamy sauce because the water has emulsified with the, the fat. But we're going to make it better with the eggs. All the cheese is gonna melt and the egg's gonna cook through in the hot pasta. And that is carbonara. I was at the shop yesterday looking for some wine and, and uh, the, I was met with the huge selection. I didn't have a clue with it yet. So I just looked on the back of the bottles and this one said perfect with spaghetti carbonara. So I thought, hey, let's try this. Just enough so I can taste it. It is only 10 in the morning. I have to say that is very good. I'm not sure if it's quite as good as the carbonara I had in Rome, but I'm very happy with it. Now, unfortunately, I never really cooked carbonara for my family because my dad and my brother are both uh, gluten intolerant. They can't have wheat, it makes them ill. Which is a shame because I would love to share uh, share this beautiful food with them, but, but I just never really get the chance to. But the other day I had an idea. How about I set up a pop-up cafe where I can cook carbonara for people. So I think what I'm going to do is put a post on my Instagram and ask if any of the people who follow me on there whether uh, they want me to come over to their house and pop up a little cafe in their kitchen and, and I can cook them some food. Mmm! I think that was a success. Before I started cooking for people I needed to create a menu and poster for my pop-up shop. Now we have the advertising poster. I'm going to put this up on Instagram and see if anyone wants me to come and pop up in their kitchen and cook them carbonara because that is the only thing on the menu. I mean, there are some drinks as well. I've got more of a drink selection. There we go, that's going up on Instagram. I then waited for the response. I had hundreds of very kind people welcoming me into their kitchen to cook up some food. Unfortunately, the only way I could fulfill all these offers would be to quit making YouTube videos altogether and actually cook carbonara full time. I kind of want to keep making YouTube videos, so I had to just choose a few kitchens to visit. I sharpened my knives and prepped all the ingredients. Well, this is my portable kitchen pop-up cafe box. We've got pasta, frying pan, knife, cheese graters, drinks, chopping board, the all-important menu. Let's go cook for some people. I'm actually quite nervous because I have never cooked for anyone apart from close friends and family. My first customer at Alex's pop-up lives in Woking, which is about an hour and three minutes north. So we're gonna drive there 
and we're gonna cook some food this evening. Hey! Yo! Here's the menu. Ha! I'll have the carbonara. No. With a side of carbonara. <laughs> <laughs> beer? Yeah. Ooh, there you go, nice, Italian, nice Italian beer. Italian beer. Ooh. Lovely stuff. I don't know what that would be like. Perfect pairing Italian. with carbonara. There you go. <laughs> no, I know nothing about wine. I've just recently changed job. Um, at a company called Charge Cars now. Uh, we do electric Mustangs, 1967 electric Mustangs. So I was a prototype engineer. Now I'm a test technician, which basically involves like taking the cars to like testing grounds like Millbrook and places like that and uh, driving them around and trying to break them, basically. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that sounds quite fun. Yeah, it is quite fun. <laughs> and this is your kitchen. This is our kitchen. What do you normally like to cook when you're at home? Well, we're quite lazy, actually. We've been doing meal services from Gusto for the last year. But is this the first time you've had some random guy turn up your, at your house? Definitely the first time I've had a random guy cooking my kitchen, yeah. She's like, I can smell it. I can She's see it. Oh, no, I can see no. it. No. Oh, I brought, I brought dog food as well. <laughs> <laughs> I brought dog carbonara. Oh. We're nearly done. Look at that. Gosh, oh, I'm kind of hungry. This is one of the most unusual situations I've ever been in. <laughs> I'm standing next to two people eating the food that I'm just gross. Can't wait to tuck in. Enjoy. I'm just going to sit. This is really awkward. Just me just like <laughs> watching. <laughs> Whoa, that meat is good. Pasta is perfectly cooked. You like the... Nice and al dente. They're saying it's nice. <laughs> they're not going to... With me sat here right now, they're not going to say it. Not yeah, nice. go stand in there. <laughs> out of 10, I would give it probably a 10, actually. 10 out of 10. Very good. Very well seasoned. Disgusting. I'd give it a 9. Yeah. A 9? Only because it's a bit salty. No, thank you. I, I am very grateful for your honest opinion. Thanks for eating my food. Thank you for looking. Time to head home and prep for tomorrow, where I'm going to be cooking again. Next up, I was heading to David's house, where I would be cooking for him and his family. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you. How's it going? You hungry? Absolutely. <laughs> Come on in. Help yourself. I'll leave the bottle over here. It's exciting cooking in different people's kitchens because I get to, get to try out loads of different people's stuff. Thank you. Mm. If you received that in a restaurant, what w would you send it back or would you say thank you? 100% I'll send it back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I'd be super happy with that if I was in an Italian restaurant, even in Italy. Thank you for eating my spaghetti carbonara. <laughs> mm. You keep, you keep eating, like... enjoy yourself. I'm going to clean up your kitchen. I, I do love dried mango, so that looks lovely. Oh, I can't even believe how much fun that is. I had one final evening of cooking and I was heading to my local city of Brighton. I don't know who's more mad, me, for going around to people's kitchens and cooking them food, or the people who are actually allowing me to go to their kitchen and cook food. I think all of us are pretty crazy, to be honest. Last evening, cooking up for people, I had to top up with wine because my previous guests have enjoyed it so much. <laughs> I'm getting used to this now, I'm getting into it. It's gonna be sad when I no longer am cooking for people. The city is really busy today. It's a Friday night, so everyone is out in the town. Apart from me. I just wanted to park my 
my automobile somewhere. So I don't like parking. I can't do it either. I can't parallel park. I'm on the curb and I'm about to hit a post. This is private parking anyway, so I, I hope I don't get a ticket. Luckily, this evening's customers, Lucy and Finn, turned up with a parking permit, so I wouldn't be getting a ticket. There he is. Hi. Do There's a menu. Oh, you have, have a little browse of that. Oh, and see what browse. See what you like. So what have you been doing this week? Just working. Yeah. And what are you going to do? Finn, who's behind the glass of wine on the left, is a nursery teacher, and Lucy, who's behind the glass of wine on the right, teaches at the local uni. Right, I'm going to head into your kitchen and uh, try not to make too much of a mess. Enjoy yourself, sip some wine, chill out. It's Friday. We have one celiac guest tonight, so I have got some gluten-free pasta. There you go! Oh, mate, I'm so uh, wait, what, what one was gluten afraid? <laughs> it's this one. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Cheers. Enjoy. Thank you. Mm -mm. I'm actually really worried about the gluten free one. This is really good. Oh. This is really good. Alex, you've had one yourself. Can you stay? Until I live in the. After my short career in the hospitality industry, I now have so much respect for people who cook in cafes, restaurants, and mobile vans. I realized it's really not easy. And I was only cooking for a couple of people at a time. I can't imagine the stress if people had actually been paying for the food I was serving. Well, it's Friday night and I am currently watching my final customers eat their carbonara. This has been a very odd experience the last week. It's been a fun journey learning about carbonara, which is my favorite food in the world, and also sharing it with people. I think that's, you know, definitely my favorite part. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you soon. Also, thanks again to Cocoon Weaver for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description to download the app and try it for yourself. See you soon for another video.